What is up ladies and gentlemen, thanks for checking out the channel. Today we're gonna go over blood squibs and see what methods we can use to make our films better. But first, a little history. In the 1950s, two films were accredited of using the first ever blood squibs, Run of the Arrow and A Generation. The blood squibs had supposedly consisted of condoms and small explosives like fireworks, but the first method we're going over is pressurized. And believe it or not, it's not as painful as it looks. So, like a madman who's going out to murder somebody, let's see what tools are available for us. The first tool, and the most useful, but relatively expensive, is an air compressor. They're great for controlling air pressure and can be small or large, whatever suits your needs. As you can see here, the guys from Filmmaker IQ have a small air compressor, which they've connected to vinyl tubing, then filled with fake blood which they combine with pressure from the air compressor to force out the liquid and are able to make simulated gunshot wounds. Now, using an air compressor is good and all, but there are two concerning issues, capacity and electricity. It needs to be hooked up to an outlet and vinyl tubing can't hold up gallons of liquids, so this method would work best for scenes that require the least amount of blood. But if all you're trying to do is truly simulate a gunshot wound, this would be your best bet. You could even get simulated gunshot wounds like this scene from Die Hard. Another great way to solve the two issues of capacity and electricity are fire extinguishers. The most common ones solve the capacity issue of holding up to two and a half gallons. They definitely solve the issue of electricity by running off of pressured gases and as a bonus, fire extinguishers are portable. Sounds great, right? Well, there are a few downsides to this. Fire extinguishers cost and refills. Most refillable fire extinguishers cost about $100 to $200 and once the fire extinguisher is empty, you need to refill it up with compressed air. So unless you're willing to buy multiple fire extinguishers, you're going to have to take a drive to the nearest gas station and refill up on compressed air. Or you're going to have to put up extra money to own your own air compressor that can hold large capacities of air while not being plugged into an outlet. But overlooking its downsides, if you're looking for portability and zero electrical reliance, and if two and a half gallons sounds good to you, this might not be a bad option. Dean, stop it! Dean! Dean, stop it! Dean! Compact, cheap, and effective. These are all great things about CO2 cartridges. The cost is exponentially low. You can buy 40 cartridges for about $20. Combined with a tire inflator and some vinyl tubing, you can simulate a gunshot wound. This essentially is an air compressor that's extremely small. It would just take some tweaking to get a relatively same result as a real air compressor. If you don't feel like making your own, you could go to these guys, Squib FX, and purchase their kits online. The only problem is that they're really expensive, and I wouldn't recommend it because I haven't used it. But if you want a hassle free, pre made kit, this would be an option. Now for the downsides of CO2 cartridges, their capacity and control. And for this, I would only recommend using CO2 cartridges if you're only doing gunshots or headshots because of the lack of control, any type of cutting or slicing wouldn't look real. Now a quick word from our sponsor. You like piercings? Cool. You like tattoos? Cool. Why not make an appointment at Tats by China today? Now for one of the best methods that I believe in, a paint pressure pot. They can hold 1 to 10 gallons and they're relatively cheap. They're light enough to be portable and the only real downside is that it has to be connected to an air compressor. There's not a lot of information on them for filming techniques, but I will try to make a video on the many methods of this system. I came across this when I was trying to replicate a scene from 2013's Evil Dead. The potential is great if you're trying to simulate rain, 
or even extreme carnage. Kind of rain there is. Little bit of stinging rain and big old fat rain. Rain that flew in sideways. And sometimes rain even seemed to come straight up. Now that we've seen that, why don't we go to something a little more explosive? So, there are really only two methods for the average person to use explosives, fireworks and rocket igniters. Most of these methods consist of either having the explosive in the front or the back of the liquid and being set off by some type of electrical current. I thought it would be appropriate to use film rides footage of them recreating the very first blood squib, condoms and fireworks. Now, I know this might sound weird, but not all blood squibs have to be made out of blood. R. Smith uses homemade dust capsules and fireworks to simulate gunshot wounds. All he uses is duct tape, cardboard, and soot from his grill. So the positives of this method is that it's really cheap and you don't need a pyrotechnics license, but it does lack control and can be extremely dangerous. Perform this at your own risk. Now this by far has to be the most professional blood squib I've ever seen. In the whole entire time I've been looking up information, this is the only kit I was able to find that utilizes rocket igniters. But the downsides are that this is expensive and you can only do gunshot wounds with these. But I have an idea to make this method better and cheaper, just maybe for a later video. But if you would like to purchase these, the link is down below. Now these have to be the most creative and cheapest methods possible. You guys probably know most of them, but if you don't, cool. And if I don't know something, please comment down below. I'd like to learn more so I can make my FX much better. The first method is just fake blood in a bottle. Simple as that. The cheapest you could go for all these methods is as low as $10 depending on how much you're willing to spend on your material and quantity. It's all up to you. The next method is a simple pump gun for plumbing. Or you guys can use water guns. The guys at in camera have said that they've used this on a number of occasions mostly for portability and functionality. You could even use a can of air by connecting vinyl tubing and pouring down the blood, same as the CO2 method. And this extremely creative method by Heckler Kane is probably by far the cheapest and the only real downside is that you have to be in a stationary position to use this. All it requires is fake blood, tape, string, and a Ziploc bag for it to work. Now, everybody knows this method. It's a simple garden pump filled up with water and food coloring, or fake blood, and then it's pressurized to simulate a headshot or a gunshot wound. This is really cheap, and the only downside is that you won't have a consistent flow. Over. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I'm really only doing this for me to be honest. I don't like having to look all over the internet for information, so this channel is really just for me to compact all the information I found into one video and then basically become a better filmmaker. I have zero experience in filmmaking, so if you're interested in learning and growing with me, why don't you join the One For All Creatives Meetup group? Maybe we can hang out sometime. If not, cool. But as always, remember to create, paint, and play. Till next time.